Let's look at the uh, purchasing cycle. So blanket purchase orders, purchase quotes, purchase orders, purchase invoices. What you see is it's really a mirror of AR. So Microsoft, again, has done a good job um, mirroring the functionality back and forth between the, the two sides, uh, the revenue cycle and the purchasing cycle. What's nice about this, again, is from a training perspective, um, you can leverage all of the training that you've done uh, on both sides of the of the system. So blanket purchase orders work really simple, very similar way to uh, blanket sales orders. Purchase quotes, sales quotes, very similar in how they work. I'm gonna open up a, a purchase order just so we can uh, talk a little bit about feature functionality here. Again, fact boxes can be leveraged if I'm looking at, um, you know, vendor information as well as line item information. I can see, uh, I can see all that on a on an entry level, just like I could, just like I could on the um, on the AR side. All right, I'm going to open this up. Full, you know, a lot of date calculations, date capabilities. Uh, we can link back to the quotes, vendor quotes, all that sort of stuff. We just show what we need to here. So working with your team, what you know, what's important, how have you implemented the system, so we make visible what's needed visible. Point out, we do have the ability to do visual cues here as well, telling me what fields are required. So that's an asterisk telling me that it's required. In terms of a line item, line items, um, very similar to AR here as well. So GL accounts, uh, items, uh, resources, fixed assets. This fixed asset is actually a connection back to the fixed assets module. A couple of things that can be done here that are really um, rather unique. Uh, I do have the ability to change the book value here with the with the fixed assets uh, section. So if I'm buying something and I want to accumulate book value, I can do that. I also can look, bark, uh, mark something as a maintenance item. What a maintenance item would allow me to do is to view total cost of ownership of the asset without actually changing the book value. So uh, if I've got a car and I do an oil change or do a repair, or uh, actually we've worked with some clients that have some huge assets like boats. Um, so we've got the ability then to track maintenance work done to that total cost of ownership, but now it's actually changing the basis, the book basis of the item. Charge items, uh, this is how we manage landed cost. Um, so if you if you work with landed cost on a purchasing side, uh, this would actually allow me to take those freight charges, um, uh, maybe customs charges, et cetera, apply them to the appropriate inventory uh, cost or the inventory layers so that I get uh, a better inventory cost. A uh, couple things that we can do here is uh, that cost um, can be distributed based on quantity, based on weight, based on volume, based on dollar value. So a lot of options there. Uh, and then we can also uh, actually apply those costs to transactions that have been sold. So if you think about an inventory item that maybe you get into a, a warehouse, you cross dock it, you ship it. So it's in and out uh, immediately, essentially. And now three weeks later, I actually get the freight bill or the customs bill or the tariff bill or something like that. And I want to apply those costs to the inventory items, but they're sold. I can actually go in and apply those to transactions, even though things are, those items have been sold. It will then update the cost. So I'm going to have a, a true cost to those inventory items. Uh, yeah, we deal with the GL transactions in the period transactions and that's all part of the setup of it but just know that that sort of functionality can be done uh, approval requests right off of the uh, transactions like we saw on the on the uh, sales side uh, print so I can also print and send you know, these documents I'll just show you this one if it's a word template uh, just like we saw on the AR side independent of the AR one so they can look differently obviously if you need them to uh, they're going to present different things but uh, in terms of control over font color, um, identical to what we saw on the AR side. Uh, posting perspective. So well, actually, no, let me go down the line item. So quantity to receive, quantity to invoice. Uh, same visibility, same concept that we saw on the AR side. I just want to point out that the uh, warehouse operations from AR are separate and can be configured different than AP. So I could require a shipment but not require a receipt or I could require a receipt not require a shipment. So however you need the system to be configured, we can uh, facilitate that. From a posting perspective, I can receive an invoice off of a, a, a purchase order if I want to. Um, we do have the, the ability to manage uh, from a three-way match perspective. If I'm doing a purchase order, I can do a separate receiving uh, transaction off of a warehouse receipt. And then on the purchase invoice, I can do the matching from a cost perspective. So certainly uh, have the ability to facilitate a uh, full three-way match uh, if needed on the system. Um, let's go down to the line item level. Let's talk a little bit more about features here, just so you can see what these look like. Uh, you need to measure conversions, obviously, not a problem, jobs. So we do have the ability to integrate with um, the jobs module from a purchasing perspective, actually from the sales perspective as well, but a little different how it works from a purchasing perspective. So I can buy 
um, inventory, uh, GL accounts, et cetera, to a particular job, I would designate the job and the task that it goes to. Dropships, talked about that on the sales order side. If this is a dropship PO, it would flag it then as a dropship over here. Sales and use tax capabilities here, connections to blanket orders if we want to. IC partner, so if you're doing uh, single payer distributed expenses, for example, um, we can do that on an AP, um, from an AP perspective. Prepayments on purchase orders if we want to, job connections, talked about before. Um, so a lot of functionality here that um, um, that's just not visible out of the box that we can enable if you need it. We do have expense deferrals, as I said. So uh, a deferral code can be set up on a purchase order line or on a purchase invoice line uh, to create the, the uh, deferral transactions. One thing to note about the deferrals is if I have, uh, let's say it's an inventory item that's for uh, maintenance that's that's over the course of a year, maintenance contract, for example, I can set up a default deferral code on that inventory item so that the user automatically gets the deferral code assigned. So I know that I'm gonna capture that right away. AP and AR both can do this. Um, I can also do it on a GL account. So if I, instead of using an inventory item, I'm using a GL account, and I know that that is uh, maintenance uh, revenue or something like that that needs to be spread over 12 months, I can set up that default deferral code on the GL account. One thing to note also about the GL account is from a sales tax perspective, a GL account can be treated just like uh, an inventory item. So the taxability of a GL account can be set up and configured um, even using an outside service just like I would on an inventory item. All right, so uh, purchasing cycle. So full purchase, purchase quotes, purchase orders, purchase invoice, and we do have the full return capability, return to vendors if you needed to. As I said, we can connect the return from the customer as well as the return to vendor all together using one transaction um, if that's a requirement of yours. All right, uh, 1099s, incoming documents. So we do have uh, an integration with Cofax. It's an outside service that would allow you to do optical character recognition integrations. So if you want to uh, leverage a service like that, it can go down to the line item. Um, there is an, a, a fee to Cofax to use that service, uh, but the nice thing about it is um, the service itself is out of the box integrated with Business Central. So no app to download, no configuration to, to do in the system. Um, you do have to do some configuration on the Cofax side because obviously your data is going to be different than everybody else's, but uh, pretty clean integration. I've actually integrated that with a, a couple of customers. <clears throat> 